Musical Joker here. Lupin Zero Episode 3 is wild. The appearance of Arsene Lupin for the first time in Lupin anime in a significant way, Lupin working against others to claim the title of Lupin the Third, and the mystery behind some characters. What I think is the most captivating part of this episode is Arsene Lupin himself as a character. Now an old man, we first see him in bed surrounded by naked women, coming off as an old conniving old coot. Initially, I thought we would see him die and pass the legacy onto Lupin in this episode. But instead, I saw some old man chub like it was Shrek with Lord Farquaad, both equally disgusting. The main reason why I'm so intrigued with Arsene Lupin is because this character is taken from Maurice LeBlanc's work, the titular gentleman phantom thief Arsene Lupin. Keyword, gentleman. Arsene Lupin is known as the French Robin Hood, stealing from the ones who can afford it and giving to the poor all while doing it without causing an ounce of violence. So tell me how quickly my head turned when I saw Arsene Lupin swiftly stole one of his female pen pal's golden teeth to teach her a lesson when speaking out of line, and as a show that everything in this world is his to steal? What? The dynamic change of this character is absolutely wild and may have a number of reasons as to why this is happening. Whether to truly separate Maurice LeBlanc's work from Monkey Punches, although this is the one and the same Arsene Lupin, to immensely change his character as he is an old fart now, and more concerned about passing on his legacy, as many people do change their ways after a long life and concerns of passing their lineage, or his deeds continuously being done where he becomes more and more like the people he stole from. And of course, the one answer that makes the most sense is that it fits within the world that Monkey Punch wanted to create. I can't say for certain for any of these, but man, I wasn't expecting Arsene Lupin to be portrayed as such a cocky, horny asshole. I expected him to be more mysterious and cryptic which I'll give him credit for, as the trial ahead represents that. Which Lupin and three other characters need to endure as they are against each other to obtain the title of Lupin III. Exciting, right? Well, I was for sure, as it was intriguing to see young Lupin take on a big endeavor such as this, with just his wits and reflexes, and doing it mainly because he's pissed at everyone. And I can't blame him, because what kind of grandfather puts a kid's dinner behind a safe and he can only eat it once he unlocks it? And a dad going out to get some milk? And then these nobodies showing up thinking they could take the Lupin title. And the other three characters are oddballs themselves. We get Reject Robin Hood, Hansel without the Gretel, and Plot. Okay, seriously. Each one of these characters were chosen as a possible candidate and have the skills and intellect to be able to pass through the challenges presented with Lupin getting some great assistance from Pulan during the trial. Like how you can assist me and like this video. Subscribe too. Majority of this episode is Lupin tackling the other tasks awaiting him, and of course, the end of the episode closing in on who can solve the final puzzle. The first person will be the one to claim the title, and yet we have come to find some bonkers shit out as it isn't simple as it seems. First off, we all got pwned, as this wasn't a silly test for Arsene Lupin's lineage. This was a test for someone to die and give up their heart to Arsene. And hey, it's all legally binding because Arsene Lupin tricked everyone into signing a piece of paper that held a secret message stating as much. Of course, our Lupin is just like his grandfather. He saw through that trick and told him to basically fuck off. A clear indication of Arsene believing that Lupin is the one to carry on the lineage of thieves, although he wanted his own grandson's heart too. This family is really messed up. In the end, Robin Hood ended up dying and his heart taken for Arsene Lupin, which good riddance as he was the worst person here and clearly the dumbest. With this fiasco done, we see that Poulan is actually Lupin II disguised and helping his son stay alive throughout the trial, since the real Poulan was tied up all along, much to Lupin's surprise. What should be more surprising is that Lupin blushed to his old man in a woman costume. And that is suddenly giving me bad Jojo Bizarre Adventure flashbacks. Ugh. Something quick to mention, Yoko made another appearance, although a small one, prior to Lupin needing to go see his grandfather. I still have my doubts as to Yoko's importance in this anime, as we know she's doing more dirty deals thanks to her talking to Lupin over drinks. Maybe she is associated with Lupin's dad as he remains a mystery, more so after his odd appearance during the competition and how he rebelled against his own father by stealing Lupin away a long time ago. 
God, so many questions and yet so little answers. We are halfway through Lupin Zero and have more things to see. So comment down below your thoughts and what you liked about this episode. Seriously, as I'm still thinking of how any of this was real, probably like Jigen was when Lupin told him all about this stuff. Anyway, until next time, farewell. <laughs>